my name is Soph and welcome back to my channel. So just over two years ago I got all nines and A stars in my GCSEs. Um, so this is how I did it and these are my tips for anyone else who's looking to do a similar thing. So I think the best thing that I did was that I learned how I learn in year nine, which meant that my revision was much more effective. So for me, I am a visual learner which means things like watching YouTube videos, making posters, um, revision notes, all those kind of things work really well for me. So the easiest thing that you can then do once you've done that is, I mean, you should be doing this anyway, but to pay attention in lessons, which, you know, kind of goes without saying, you should be paying attention, otherwise you're going to miss things. And you should be doing all of the work that you are set. So yeah, if your teacher does set an extension question or two, try them as well um, because they might be more like what you would get as like a really stretching question in an exam so if you can do them brilliant um, and again it's just more practice um, as far as possible pick subjects that you like so I know that there are some core ones that you have to do like you have to do science and you have to do English and you have to do maths but after that you have got a load of options now okay some schools force you to do say a language or RE or something like that but with those that you do have left as far as possible pick subjects that you like not that your parents like not that your friends like not that you think look good on a CV pick subjects that you like because you will enjoy them more you will find them easier um, and basically the whole process will just be a lot less painful surround yourself with other people who want to do well so basically don't sit yourself next to the person who messes around during lessons and who doesn't want to do the work and is just there because they have to be. Surround yourself with the people who are like you and who want to do well, who are aiming for those top grades um, and basically it just builds a really supportive environment where you all motivate each other and you all help out each other and it's much easier to do well in that kind of environment than one where you're all like the odd one out for wanting to do well um, because it's kind of like a peer pressure that will kind of make studying seem like a bad thing and a negative thing and something that you only do because you have to um, rather than something that you do because you want to do well and you enjoy learning. Um, Obviously, you need to do lots of past papers, especially towards exam season, um, because ultimately that's how you're going to get examined. That's what you need to be good at. Um, also, revise for end of unit tests. Um, now, don't go crazy on them, but equally try not to wing them, um, because if you go over the content in class, you go home and you do your homework on it and then you revise for it as part of a end of topic test, that's three times that you've met that topic already. So basically this is coming into kind of the space repetition thing. So say you're in year 10, that's three times, then maybe you have end of year exams, that's four times that you've now um, covered it. Then say you have mocks halfway through year 11, that's five times, and then by the time you come to sit your exams, that would be the sixth time. So you've really taken advantage of the length of time that you have and really got in your spaced repetition so that hopefully by the time you come to sit your exams it will be wedged right in your long term memory and that will just make it a lot easier. Um, when revising, um, use the exam specification. So if you know what exam board you're doing to so say AQA Physics GCSE and you just type into Google AQA Physics UCSE specification and it's a massive long document but it is really useful. Now there's a bit of waffle at the beginning and end but in the middle basically it tells you everything you need to know and everything you can be examined on. So that is what your teacher gets to then teach you off. So basically that will help you decide which bits of information are the important bits that you can be examined on and which bits are like the background information um, so that you can really tailor your revision to the things that you're going to be asked in the exam. Um, 
then when you do do your revision and practice and all of that jazz um, and let's say you make a mistake because everyone's gonna make a mistake at some point um, make sure that you actually address it and make corrections don't just hide away from it and pretend that it never happened yes it is uncomfortable at first to admit that you've made a mistake but if you do hide away from it it's not gonna go away and then how annoyed would you be if a really similar question came up in your exam but because you didn't address it in your revision, you didn't know the answer or you made the same mistake again and then you found out that you were one mark off the next grade. And then you'll be sitting there thinking, if I just addressed that correction when I had it a couple of weeks ago, I would have got a grade up and maybe that was the grade that you needed to get into college or to do a specific A-level and you've missed it because of that one thing that you didn't pick up on. Um, so yeah, make sure that you address mistakes and that you make corrections and if you find that there are mistakes that you are making quite frequently, just make a note of them um, and then like before you do a test, just read over the mistakes that you make quite often and then try and not make them in the test that you do um, and hopefully that will help you stop making them basically. Um, at GCSE I found revision guides to be super helpful because they're kind of like revision notes and a textbook and an exam guide and some practice questions all thrown into one little book um so if those are your thing definitely utilize them um another thing that i did which uh, i think really helped was teaching friends so if my friend was struggling with a topic um i would volunteer at lunch basically to go through it with them because the best way to learn something and to make sure you understand it yourself is to teach it to someone else. So not only are you gaining from this because you're teaching it to someone else, so you're making sure that you understand it, you're consolidating it, you're learning it, you're also helping out a friend. So I think this is a win-win situation. And then say that was a topic that I wasn't too sure on and they were really confident on it. I go, oh, can you teach me that? And basically... Um, so for all grades, you are competing against the rest of the country. So you and your friends may as well get together and basically help each other to do the best you can um, because you're not competing against each other. You are competing against everyone else in the country. There is no reason why both of you can't get a nines or whatever grade it is that you're after. Um, so don't be afraid to help your friends and then if you need help, ask them to help you um again test each other um so um say you each make up 10 questions um in like say a group of three or four of you and you take it in turns to be like the quiz master and basically you do like a little quiz show night thing um and then you can i don't know keep track of who scored best and say the prize is a packet of haribo or some chocolate or something um but i think that was a really fun method of revision that we used and you get a little bit competitive and whatever um participate in class discussions so particularly for humanity subjects um bounce off each other with ideas you know in history why did this happen well maybe it was because of this oh no actually maybe it was because of this and basically it's a really great opportunity to test your ideas um and to get other people to come in and pick up the strengths and weaknesses in them if you were to make a mistake then your teacher is there and they can correct you straight away um rather than like going home and kind of almost learning it wrong and then it being corrected later in say a homework or something and um, so basically it just irons out any problems straight away um if you are able to choose where you sit um sit in the front of the class because then you are less likely to get distracted by your classmates um, you can see easier, the teacher is closer to you if you need any help and I think it just sets a better environment. It's a bit like I said earlier with surrounding yourself with other people who want to do well. While sitting at the front is usually associated with being like a goody two shoes and like the teacher's pet and like a Hermione, there's almost a reason why it's associated with that because it does help um so if you do get to choose where you sit sit at the front um 
Also, a super easy thing that you can do is that you can write in blue ink and not black ink. So like in class, when you're writing out your notes and whatever, write in blue ink and not black ink because your brain just processes slightly better in blue. Um, but then you do have to do your exams in black so they can like scan them in and read it. So I used to do any class notes, revision notes, anything like that in blue. And then any exam practice, mocks, all of that jazz was done in black. Um, also, make sure that you make good notes. So whilst it's great to be able to remember it at the time, you need to be sure that you will still be able to remember it in a month's time, six months time or two years time, like when your exam is. So yes, you might remember it, um, but it's best just to write some good notes just so that if you were to forget, you're able to quickly go over it. Um, without then having to plow through textbooks and whatever to try and find the information or having to go back to your teacher and be like can you actually teach me that again because I've forgotten so just make good notes from the start um, and that kind of includes revision notes as well um, make sure that you utilize all your resources so that's your teacher your textbook your revision guide your friends um, older siblings that have done the same um, YouTube websites, um, Quizlet, anything you can get your hands on, make sure that you utilise it. Um, personally, I think there are plenty of free resources out there um, that you can use. So I personally wouldn't recommend paying for a service. Um, obviously that's a personal decision and you can if you want, but I think there are plenty of free resources out there so that you don't have to pay for like an online service or whatever. Um, the only exception being at GCSE, I would recommend buying the revision guides, but you can buy them secondhand, dead cheap, that's what I did. Um, yeah. Um, then link the topics together. So as much as they're almost taught in like chapters and modules, you'll often find that there are links between them and exam questions especially with the new 9 to 1 syllabus, really love to like play on that um, and get you to link everything together and apply it to the real world um, in an exam. So if you can practice that now, then when it comes to the exam, you might have already thought of, oh yeah, that links to that. Um, and that'll just make it much easier for you to answer the question. Um, particularly for sciences, you should be able to relate things to the real world really easily. Um, the next thing, which I only realised a couple of weeks before my exams, and I wish I'd done it so much earlier, um, is that as you're doing questions, you'll find that there are some that come up all the time. And if you look at the mark scheme, they're almost always identical or very minor differences. So basically, spot the common questions and then get together the mark schemes and write a perfect answer and just learn it. Um, particularly if you're not planning to do the subject at A level, um, in which case, as much as this is a real downside to our education system, it doesn't really matter if you understand it. You just need to be able to write it down in an exam, in which case this works brilliantly. Um, obviously it's ideal to understand it um, and you should try that as far as possible but equally this is a really good hack just to get a couple of marks in the bag. Make sure that you stay on top of your work. So make sure that the amount of homework you're getting in each day is the same as the amount that you're doing each day. So that doesn't necessarily mean that you've got to do every single piece of homework that you've got the night that it's set but definitely don't be leaving it you know more than a couple of days to be doing it um, and certainly don't let it all build up. I found it really helpful to make friends with older students as they'll often have really good pieces of advice um, that they can give you, maybe they'll give you their revision resources, maybe they'll tell you about an amazing website or something or maybe just generally giving you a bit of advice um, but I found what they told me invaluable um, so if you can, I definitely recommend that. And finally, be accountable. At the end of the day, it is your GCSE. 
so there's no point in blaming everyone else. Yes, it might be annoying if you have someone in your class who messes around, but there are things that you can do about that. If it is really excessive, you can talk to your teacher, your form tutor, um, just anyone at school about it and just say, look, actually, I'm really trying to concentrate and this person's being really distracting. You know, would you mind doing something about it? Um, Um, the other thing that I hear all the time is, but my teacher didn't tell me this, or something to that effect. And first of all, often you will find that the teacher did say it and they weren't listening. But as much as not having a brilliant teacher is far from ideal, at the end of the day, there isn't a lot you can do about it. And as much as that sucks, and I would love for us to be in a situation where it didn't matter where you went to school, the teaching standard was the same across the board, that's just not the case but you have the internet and you can utilize that so you can download the specification and as you go along you can tick off each lesson what you've learned to make sure that you have covered all the content and then at the end if you think there's something that you're missing you can go talk to your teacher about it and hopefully they can fill in the gaps maybe you missed a lesson or maybe they had missed out um you know, use BBC Bite Size, your revision guides, YouTube, anything like that. Um, because at the end of the day, it is your GCSE. And as you go through education, you'll find that you have to be more and more independent. And basically, you're not always going to be spoon fed the answers. So you need to get used to being responsible for your own learning. Um, so that is how I think I got all nines and A stars in my GCSEs. Hopefully there was some useful advice that you can take on board to help you do better. Um, if anyone else has any ideas, anything that they did um, that they think would be helpful, definitely leave them in the comments. Um, make sure to like and subscribe for more similar content and thank you for watching.